So today we're going to use Tinkercad to create a basic sort of nameplate slash keychain slash luggage tag. We're going to use some basic shapes and we're going to experiment with this brand new, um, what they're calling the Tinkercad beta interface. Um, as of today, it looks like the beta interface has become sort of the default interface and there are definitely still some bugs that they're working on, um, so we'll have to be sort of mindful of those. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a box shape and we're going to drag that onto our work plane. And the main error slash glitch that I'm uh, encountering is that <clears throat> now you have these great sliders over here that will allow you to alter the dimensions of your object either by using the slider itself or by typing things in numerically like this. Um, the problem is is that when you go and manually change things like I'm doing right now as this little pop-up is going to tell us um, scaling it manually down here on the actual shape you'll notice isn't changing any of the values up here um, and what I'm finding basically is that values up here don't match values down here um, I'm sure that's something they'll clear up pretty soon um, and what I'm hoping to get accomplished today I'm not really concerned with super um, super specific values and dimensions I'm basically just going to sort of eyeball it and make it look the way I want it to look um, and then when I was to import it into whatever slicing software I'm using that's when I would sort of get down and dirty with um, how big I want this thing to be uh, so that won't really affect us too much one thing I will do um, is I will click this edit grid button uh, in case you're more comfortable with inches than millimeters you can change that right there um, if you know for a fact which of your 3D printers is going to be used and it's on this list you could change it um, and it would reflect um, on the grid here in our workspace. I'm going to leave it at default um, and press update grid that's going to change um, from millimeters to inches. Uh, but like I said mostly I'm just going to eyeball this and get the dimensions sort of correct um, in relation to each other. So what I'm looking for is sort of a longish uh, rectangle um, that's probably about a third wide as it is long um, and about this tall. Great, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I could also come up here um, and now there's a new duplicate button right up here so I'll just go ahead and give that a shot and what that's probably what's that, what's that, what that has done is created a second exact uh, duplicate of my rectangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this rectangle a little bit smaller and I'm going to do that by grabbing one of these corner pieces and I'm going to hold down the shift button and I'm going to scale it down. And just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead up here and click on the solid button and I'm just going to change the color for a second so it will be easier for us to see um, as I sort of merge it into this one. So what I'm going to do is bring it into this, this rectangle and I'm going to raise it up a bit. It can get tricky once you do, once you uh, Maybe I should raise it up first. And raising it up has a few has a few uh, few reasons why I do that, and they'll become clear in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and get this um, about centered. But to make sure I have it exactly centered, I'm going to go ahead and drag a box around both of these shapes to get them both selected. And I am going to go to align up top here, and I'm going to align them in two ways. This way, by making sure that their middle point in this direction um, is the same and I'm going to do it on the side here. So now this new orange rectangle is exactly centered in the red rectangle. And now I need to click somewhere other than these two boxes to sort of close out the alignment tool. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to use this orange rectangle to create a hole or to cut a hole in the larger red rectangle. And I do that by selecting this smaller rectangle which I have it selected and changing its sh uh, its mode from solid to whole. And I see that by accident I guess I had both those shapes um, selected so I'll go ahead and press control Z to undo or I could hit this back arrow up here. I'll click off of these to get them unselected or I'll try to at least and I'll make sure that I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the smaller rectangle. I got it now and I'll go ahead and change that to a hole. But I haven't actually cut anything yet. I've just sort of changed its mode. And if I want to actually use that shape to cut the hole into the larger shape, I'm going to get them both selected again and I'm going to group them together either by pressing Control G or clicking this group button at the top of the screen. 
and after a few seconds you'll see that that smaller rectangle has cut a hole into the larger rectangle. At this point I'm going to come and grab the text tool and this is something they've updated in the new version um, and it works great because now what I can do um, actually I'm going to do one thing first I'm going to go ahead and click the work plane tool up top here or I can press W and I'm going to set the work plane right here inside the little hole that I've cut and you'll see that it's moved upwards on um, to that surface right there I could for example move it onto that surface and basically what this is going to allow me to do is when I drag a new shape into my workspace it's going to be on that new work plane um, and that can be very convenient so I'm going to go ahead and undo those I'm going to press W I'm going to put the work plane inside my little hole which is going to be slightly upraised from where it was originally and now when I grab my text tool and bring it over that's where my text is actually going to exist it's going to start on that work plane now the great thing about the new text tool is that instead of dragging out individual letters like I had done before um, I can simply come into the editor here and type out the word or words that I want to that I want to have um, they're automatically going to be spaced properly um, I can change the font to whatever I want well to the to the few options they have but there are now new fonts um, and I have those same editors here um, that will allow me to slightly change what's going on here so if I change the segments here basically I'm adding a little fillet to the um, to the letters which is kinda nice um, and I can also change the height of the letters so I'm gonna write in the word I want to have for my nameplate happens to be my, my first name uh, and that's much easier than it used to be but now what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and get both of these things selected again so now I have the nameplate itself and my text and I'm gonna once again go up to the align tool and basically I want to make sure that it's aligned this way and aligned this way so I know that the name is exactly in the center of the nameplate itself and just for a few final touches uh, in order to make this sort of a keychain or a luggage tag I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little hole into it so I could um, string something through it to do that I'm gonna grab a cylinder tool bring it onto the workspace and I'm gonna make it much smaller I'll come to the corner here and I'll hold down shift to keep the ratios between length and width um, the same and I'll just go ahead and shrink it down quite a bit and I'm gonna grab that white square on the top I'm gonna to make this thing long in fact longer than it probably needs to be because what I can do now is move it over onto the corner of my nameplate and what I want to happen is I want this thing to be moving all the way through the nameplate so I'm gonna grab the black arrow on top which will allow me to just move it downwards And what I'm looking for is I want it to be popping out both sides and once I have that then I can change it from a solid into a hole and now what I can do is I'm gonna click the nameplate itself I'm gonna hold down shift and click the cylinder and now I have them both selected and now I can group them together and after a few seconds once I've grouped them that will actually make the cut from the cylinder through the nameplate and I've got a nice little hole there And at this point I'm basically finished I'm gonna go ahead and get everything selected group everything together it's just a good practice to get in the habit of and I can export this for 3d printing um, since everything I have is currently selected as well one group I can keep that box checked and for my particular printer and for most I would assume I can download an STL file that I can bring into my slicer software to get this printed if you'd like to push a little further and make this a little bit more interesting we can do that what you need to do is go back and ungroup your text from your box I've actually already done that um, so I got the whole thing selected and I click the ungroup button so my text is once again um, separate from the nameplate itself and for now I'm just gonna move that off to the side uh, I don't want it to interfere with what we're about to do so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring the work plane up to the top of the nameplate here so I'll do 
do it here. So there we go. And I'll bring a box out. And for me, this sort of default width is fine. I am going to go ahead and make it about three quarters of an inch high. This is sort of totally up to you. This is more for aesthetics than anything else. I'm going to get both my nameplate and my box selected, and I'm going to make sure that they are centered on each other. So I'm going to go ahead and center them this way. And now I'm going to make this a bit longer so it stretches across both ends of the nameplate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this twice. I'm going to press Control D, and I'm going to move that new copy over. I'm going to click back on the original, press Control D again, and move this one over. And now what I'm going to do is take this middle one and I'm going to move it down. Oop, I didn't mean to rotate it. Let's undo any rotation I might have accidentally did. Get a better view. And grab that black arrow. And we're just going to move this whole thing down to about there. I'm going to take each of the side ones and I'm going to move them down the same amount um, as each other. So a little bit less. So all right. Now I'm going to hold down shift to make sure I have all three of these new rectangles selected. I'm going to turn them into holes. I'm going to go ahead and get all of this stuff together and I'm going to group them so that those holes actually get cut out. You'll see I made a little mistake here. It's no big deal. I'm going to undo. And so I've got a little bit of a gap between this rectangle and the middle rectangle. So what I'm going to do is get it selected and I'm going to use the left arrow to move it over. And you'll see I'm moving more than I want to move. So I'm going to change down here what's called the snap grid. And right now the snap grid is, is how it's the increment that things move um, sort of one tick. And right now it's at 1 8. So I'm going to change this down to like 1 32nd of an inch. And now when I press the arrow keys, I have much more fine tuned control about how far I'm moving. So I'm going to I'm going to try 1 64th and see if I can get them exactly lined up. That's probably exactly what I want. Now let's take this one over here. And that's going to be about as close as I can get to having them exactly lined up. I think. Over here, I might still have some empty space, so I'm going to move this one over one more tick. And now I'm going to group everything together. There we go. So a little bit more pizzazz, looks a little bit more interesting. I'm going to bring my name back in here, and of course, we're going to go ahead and align them again. So align, we want to align them this way and that way, perfectly centered. And now I can once again group the whole thing together and export it as an STL file.